So I just got done watching The Acolyte, and all I can say is you guys really need to thank me for the excruciating pain that I put myself through just for your entertainment. But in all seriousness, I think we all had our doubts about this show ever since the trailer got absolutely nuked by everyone and their mum. It is a fan's right mm -hmm. to have whatever opinion they want to have. But I tried my best to block that from my mind and watch the show with fresh eyes, but yeah, it didn't help. And don't get me wrong, I don't think it's the worst thing that Disney Star Wars has made, as there were one or two things that I did like about the show, but two positives don't save the 25 negatives that I had with the Acolyte, from the corny flat dialogue to the average effects to some very, very, very very dry performances. Attack me with all your strength. I appreciate your courage, young warrior. I have no quarrel with you. Attack me. Boring. Everything about the Acolyte just felt flat which I think is very much due to Disney just not giving the creatives enough creative control, but we'll touch on that later, as first I want to acknowledge the fact that this show is going to divide fans, critics, and the media, as some people will come out and say that the only people that hate the Acolyte are bigots, and so in order to shut down any of that, in my review I'm going to keep it about the objective cinematic elements, and just discuss the most objective negative and positives with this show in order to give the most bulletproof argument possible for why the Acolyte is just objectively bad. But before we get to those reasons, here's a quick one minute word from our sponsor. So given the fact that a lot of my audience are men over the age of 30, I can imagine that a fair few of you guys are starting to deal with hair loss. So that's why I wanted to introduce you guys to Keeps, as they allow you to get professional hair loss treatment from the comfort of your own home without ever visiting a doctor's office or a pharmacy. And they deliver these treatments right to your front door in discreet packaging. And how do I know? Because they delivered a package to me. And out of this package, I've used the thickening shampoo as well as the thickening conditioner. And I've also got to recommend the pomade, which works amazingly and also smells really good. So whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just take better care of the hair that you have, Keeps definitely has you covered. So thanks to Keeps for sponsoring this video and for the free product. Hair loss stops with Keeps. And for a special offer to get started, go to keeps.com slash jesse grant or click the link down below in my description. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash jesse grant. But let's get back to the video. Okay, so the first problem with the Acolyte is the cinematography. Now, this has become a problem with basically anything that Star Wars has made in recent years, which is sad because what made the original franchise so great was the incredible cinematography. But in this show, we get nothing shots like this one. Brother, uh. And I get the argument that TV shows don't have the same cinematic quality as films, but when you see that shows like Dune Prophecy are able to do it, and you know that Disney are richer than God, it really leaves no excuse for the lack of time and care for the look of the show. And then the second issue that I have with the Acolyte has to be the performances. And I find it hard to blame the actors for this one, as you can really only be as good as the script allows you to be, but man did they all just feel dry and uninspired, which has become a trend in many modern Star Wars projects where everyone just seems to talk like this. Jedi do not attack the unarmed. And they all just have the same speech patterns and breathing patterns and never really show any emotion in anything that they say. Which leads us to the poor writing of the Acolyte, because as a writer you're meant to give each character a unique voice, and much of the personality of a character comes out in the way that they speak and how often they take a breath. Because if someone's a more energetic, manic character, they're going to breathe way less often, whereas if someone is a confident, calm, and centered character, they're going to breathe a lot more often. But then when we get to a show like The Acolyte, everyone seems to take the same sort of breaths and speak in the same sort of rhythm, which gives none of the characters any real dimension and never really creates much chemistry between anyone because all of the characters are basically just the same. And 
so of course this is going to add more fuel to the rumors of Disney using AI to write their script, but I think it comes more down to Disney producers just having way too much to do with the creative writing process and involving themselves in areas that they just shouldn't be involving themselves in because they're only being a bottleneck to their own shows and they're definitely hindering the quality of all of the creative work that they do. And so honestly, Disney, can you please just let the people you hired do the job that you hired them to do? And then another huge issue that I had with the writing was the tension building, because I get that we're only two episodes in, but they chose to start episode one at a high point in intensity, but us as an audience don't know these characters yet, we don't know their full backstory, and we don't know the story that's going to unfold, so why on earth would we feel any of that intensity when you haven't earned it yet? That's meant to be a huge rule in storytelling, you have to earn the right to the audience's attention, and you have to earn the right to the audience's intensity. And so, like I said, if we don't know what the story is, and we don't know who these characters are, why are we going to feel anything. Not to mention the fact that all of the stakes are built up of the character's backstory, but they never fully show us the backstory, so once again we struggle to feel it. And we all know that the golden rule of writing is to show, not tell, whereas the acolyte literally just tells us the stakes and tells us the backstory and never really shows it. There are a few flashbacks here and there, but they never really piece together why these characters are feeling the emotion they have and why we're meant to feel the intensity that they're trying to conjure. And so moving on to the two things that I kind of enjoyed about The Acolyte, one being the choreography wasn't awful, I mean it wasn't anything to write home about, and it's certainly not spectacular, but I did like the fact that they chose to use other martial arts sort of weapons that gave the fight scenes an extra element over there just being lightsabers, I did think that was kind of cool, and I actually thought that the score was quite good as well, and the score definitely helped a lot in trying to create an emotion that the script just wasn't able to do. But now moving on to the last segment, which is how I would fix this terrible show. And so the first thing that I would do if I was Disney would be to drastically increase the production time because the Acolyte really felt rushed and felt more like a first draft as opposed to a final product. And I also think that if Disney gave the writers and actors more time to work with and more creative control, I'm sure we would have watched a much more creative creatively enhanced show, and we would have found it a lot more entertaining and possibly felt the stakes that we were meant to feel. And that also goes for the camera work too, because the cinematography, like I said, just felt lazy, it just felt uninspired and wasn't epic in scale, when that's something we come to expect from Star Wars, but it is something I think you need a lot of time to develop and work on and come up with the shots you want to get, and so Disney need to give the cinematographer that amount of time and give the director enough time to actually conjure the vision for the show and come up with a vibe that will actually work. And I also think that Disney need to go and find inspiration from great limited series because they seem to be writing a six to eight episode show in a sort of CW way that seems more suited to a 25, 30 episode season as opposed to something that is five to eight episodes. It would make much more sense to make these shows a lot more thrilling and attack it more from a thriller perspective where the tension is going to build up over time and you're going to get get a huge payoff in the end, as opposed to just sort of meandering through a plot and trying to put too much corny humour in there. I just don't think that works. I just don't think that's sufficient to creating a good six to eight episode limited series. Because at the end of the day, even if they want to make a season two or a season three, they need to approach each season as a limited series, the way something like Stranger Things did, and of course that would end up paying off. And so once again, nothing wrong with a CW style of writing, but it's just not right for an eight episode season. But those are my thoughts on The Acolyte, and that's how I would approach trying to fix it. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and if you liked the video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you all on my next video.